Welcome to a new episode about Linux system programming. Today we will take a look at the fork function which can be used to create a new process by duplicating the calling process. But let me show you what this means by giving you a simple example. So here I will create a new C file I will call fork1.c and the first thing I will do is I will include two header files. So first I will include standard IO for printf and I will include unix standard because in this header file we can find the prototype for the fork function. Okay and then I will create the main function. The first thing I will do is I will print out starting. Then I will print stop. And I will return zero and exit the program. And what I will do now is I will call the fork function here. And that's the whole program. So let me save it and try to compile it. Compiled. And now let's run it and let's see what it's doing. So we can see it, it reached the first printf. It's printing out starting. Then it calls fork. And then we can see two times print out the word stop. Okay, let's copy fork here and let's compile it again and run it and let's see what this is doing. So I'm running it again and now we can see stop is print out four times. And if I'm copying it one more time, so we have three forks in the program now, we are compiling it again, we are running it again, now stop is print out eight times. So Every time fork is called, a new process is created, which is a duplicate from the same process. And from the start of the next line, this new process continues executing. So when we are starting this program, we have one process. With the first fork, we have two. Then here we got four. And with this fork, we got eight processes in total. So by using fork, we are creating a new process, which is a duplicate of the called um, process or of the calling pro um, process. And yeah, but how can we distinguish? So with fork, when we have the two processes, we speak of a parent process, which is the process who spawned the new process. And we have a child process, which was created by fork. How can we distinguish between these two processes? Well, therefore we have to analyze the return value of the fork function. So let's create a variable from the type integer I will call it process ID. And let's set the process ID to the return value of the fork. And let's delete these two lines. So in case the process ID is smaller than zero, an error occurred while creating the process, so in this case, I will print out um, the error and fork. Okay. In case the process ID is equal to zero, we are now in the child process. And I will print out, this is the child process with PID. And I will also print out the process ID. And in order to get the process ID, I have to call the function get pit for get process ID. And in case the value is bigger than zero, we are now in the parent process and the return value for the parent process is the process ID of the child. So here I will print out this is the parent process with pit and here I will print out the process ID of the parent process. The child has process ID and I will print out the process ID which was returned from the function. Okay, so let's, and maybe let's delete the stop here. We don't need it any longer. So let's delete this. Let's compile the program and let's run it. Okay, so the first thing we can see is it's starting. Then for the parent process, we are getting the print. This is the parent process with process ID 1192. 
the child has process ID 1193. And here in the child, we can see the process ID is the exact value which was also passed to, um, yeah, to the parent or which was returned to the parent. So yeah, so with fork, you can see we have duplicated our process. And what's also, because we are duplicating the process, for example, all the variables, global and the variables in the main function, they are, will be all will be duplicated. And the problem is, if we have a global variable before, it's of course still available in the um, child process, but if you're changing it in the child process, it isn't changed in the, um, in the parent process because for Linux, the, two, the child and the parent process are two separate processes. And therefore we need to think about mechanisms to communicate between the different processes. But this is a topic for the next video. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.